Hey everybody, it's John with Freshwater Systems and in our series of answering frequently asked questions, today we're talking about water storage tanks. What is a water storage tank? Well, frankly, it's anything that we're going to use to store water for use later. It could be uh, a low recovery well system where we have to pull water out of the well to have to run the household with. It could be an RO storage tank. It could be a well pressure tank. There's all kinds of sizes, shapes, and configurations that we use in the water treatment business. How does a water storage tank work? Simply holds water until we need it. If it's a pressurized storage tank, it's going to have the ability to come out under its own power. That's what the pressurized side of that tank is for. If it's an atmospheric tank, it's just going to hold the water until we pull it out with maybe a booster pump. Uh, and typically, that's as simple as holding the water until we need it. What are storage tanks used for? Well, if we're using reverse osmosis, it's a slow process. So we want to accumulate water in a storage tank until we need it and, and can use it. If it's a point of use type of reverse osmosis system, it's usually co coupled with a three gallon storage tank. And that three gallon tank is hydro pneumatic. And that's where we have a pressure system or a pressurized chamber in that tank to push the water out. If we're using it in a larger scale, let's say we are treating water for the whole house, but the water conditions mean that we probably should use reverse osmosis, we have a large tank that we're going to fill with that reverse osmosis unit and then pump it through the house when we need it. So there's a variety of applications for big storage tanks all the way down to the little small ones. How do you install a water storage tank? Well, it really depends on how we're going to use it. So that little small uh, pressurized tank that we're going to use for reverse osmosis, it literally just connects with a piece of tubing. If we're setting up a well system, that pressure tank is going to be installed with water inlet from the well. It's going to have a check valve. It's going to have a pressure relief valve and typically a boiler drain so that we can drain the tank down if we need to, as well as a product called a pressure switch. And that pressure switch is what tells the well pump to turn on and turn off based upon how much water and pressure builds in that storage tank for the well supply. Why are water storage tanks elevated? Well, typically the ones that are elevated are atmospheric, like the big water tower tank in your community. The water is pumped up there and held, and by when you open the tap at your house, for example, the column of water and the weight of that water way up in the tower, it is what creates water pressure to get the water all the way to your house. Um, some tanks, if we're using it for a storage tank at the house, it's elevated just to help the water come out of it with some pressure. How do you keep a water storage tank from freezing? Well, don't put it in a place where it's going to get that cold. Absolutely a concern if you live in a, in a cold part of the country and you've got to have a storage tank that has outside exposure. Uh, chances are if you don't take measures to keep that water moving, sometimes putting an aeration pump inside to keep that water moving so it doesn't get a chance to freeze might be a way to do it. But typically you're going to have a storage tank in your house, in your barn, something along that nature. You need to take steps to make sure it doesn't freeze. How do you keep storage tanks clean? It depends on the style of tank. If I'm using an atmospheric tank, I'm probably going to put a couple drops of chlorine in it every so often. Depending upon the size of the tank, it might be a couple of cups. An RO or pressurized storage tank, it's good to run some sanitizing solution through it periodically because there's always going to be a tendency for a little bit of slime to accumulate. Uh, well pressure tanks, um, RO storage tanks, all of those kind of things. Good idea is to drain them down, put a little sanitizing solution in them, and, and flush them out real good is good steps. That could be semi-annually, it could be annually. It really depends on the kind of water that you're putting into that tank. How do you know what size tank do you need? 
Well, that's going to be dependent upon the application and what your usage patterns are. If I'm sizing a reverse osmosis system just for drinking water for a large house or maybe even a small office, I'm going to estimate how much demand is going to be on that system. And I'll size accordingly with the RO output as well as storage. Um, when you've got an office where the demand is going to be usually spiked, it's going to be a lot of water draw first thing to make coffee and maybe a lot of water demand around lunchtime for people getting water. It's, uh, it's going to be something that you're going to want to have enough storage to meet that kind of demand. Uh, in a household, there's a formula based upon the size of your pump, on how long it needs to run uh, in between, or how long it needs to run in a cycle. You're going to size that tank accordingly. If you're dealing with an atmospheric tank for whatever reason, typically you're going to know what a water demand is for that particular usage. If I'm using it to irrigate, if I'm using it to run a household, then I want to size it big enough to cover my demand typically for a day. How do you calculate storage tank capacity? Capacity for a storage tank, a reverse osmosis storage tank, is going to be based upon how much demand we have, how much water use, how much water we're going to drink or cook with or use in a break room. If we're sizing a, a tank for a restaurant where we're running a coffee brewer or those kind of things, again, it all boils down to how much water you need and how much water you can store in one of these tanks. What is an underground water tank and what is a domestic storage tank? An underground water tank is typically called a cistern and it can be, it can be up to thousands of gallons in size. Uh, if we go out of the United States, quite frankly, there's a lot of water storage by household in the form of a cistern. Uh, water pumps up into this big tank up on the roof of a house and that's, the, that's the, all the water you get for the day. Um, underground storage tanks can be used with rain harvesting as an example. Uh, this, these tanks will hold a couple hundred to a couple thousand gallons depending upon how big a tank gets buried. And that's the water a lot of times we'll run the household with. And those can be considered domestic tanks. Well, that's all I have. Be sure and like this video, subscribe to our channel, and check us out on our website at freshwatersystems.com.